king's kid. Yes, I'm a king's kid. My father is the king over everything. So I will sing this song because I know that I belong to the king of the universe. I'm a king's kid. Yes, I'm a king's kid. My father is Uh, Good day there, King's Kids. I'm Arnie from Arnie Shack. Uh, we have a great Bible story to look at today. It's about a man called Captain Naaman who had leprosy. Uh, it comes from 2 Kings chapter 5. Uh, the verse to remember this week comes from John 1:16. Uh, it says, uh, From his abundance we have all received one gracious blessing after another. Uh, why don't you try and learn this one, King's Kids? Uh, it's a great verse. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get on with it. My name is Olivia. I love to travel and investigate the world, learning and experiencing all about the land, the people and how they interact. This is called geography. Did you know that studying the geography of the Bible can help us understand the stories and how amazing they are? Today we are exploring the geography of Syria that Captain Naaman travelled from to see the prophet Elijah in Israel. Syria is a country in the Northern Hemisphere and is located north of the country of Israel. Modern day Syria also shares a border with the country of Lebanon, although Lebanon became a country long after Bible times. Many important ancient cities were located in Syria or near its borders. One of these was the city of Damascus. Sixteen main rivers and tributaries, rivers that join bigger ones, flow along Syria's borders or in its valleys. These rivers are shared with other countries and are important for agriculture. The Euphrates is the longest and most important river in this country. Both the Tigris and the Euphrates flow through the countries of Turkey and Iraq before they join and flow into the Persian Gulf. The beautiful Orontes River flows west into the Mediterranean Ocean. We know that Naaman was proud of the beautiful rivers that flowed in his country of Syria. Listen carefully to the story today 
to see if you can tell how we know this. Until next time, King's Kids, keep learning, questioning, and exploring our amazing world. Hello, boys and girls. It's Granny Grace here again with another story from God's special book, the Bible. In a country far, far from home, a slave girl listened to her mistress sobbing. What is the matter, my lady? she asked. It's Naaman, my husband, the lady sobbed. He has leprosy and no one can make him better. The slave girl knew about leprosy. It was a nasty skin disease and people who had it did not get better. Not even important people like Naaman, the captain of the king's guard. The slave girl also knew about the true God of heaven, the God she worshipped. Would her God heal Naaman? She was sure he would. Her God loved everyone, even Naaman. Taking a big breath, she said, Why don't you send Naaman to the prophet Elisha in my country? I am sure my God would help him. Why not, thought Naaman's wife. Maybe the God of my slave girl can help Naaman. No one in my country can help him. So Naaman set off for the country of Israel. As he came near the prophet's house, a messenger came to greet him. Welcome, Naaman. The prophet Elisha tells you to go and wash in the Jordan River seven times and you will be healed. Naaman was astounded. What a rude man, he thought. He didn't even come to see me himself and now he wants me to go and wash in a dirty river. The rivers in my country are cleaner. I will wash there. He turned his chariot around to go back home but one of his servants said, Captain Naaman, this is only a little thing the prophet Elisha asked you to do. I think you should do it. Naaman thought about it. What his servant said was true. So Naaman rode to the river. He pulled off his heavy robes. He stepped into the water. Under he went. He came up and the leprosy was still there. Two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, Naaman dipped under the water and the leprosy was still there. One more time to go. Down went Naaman. Up came Naaman. The leprosy was gone. Naaman knew that the God of Israel had enough love and grace for everyone. God's grace is for everyone. Who will you show God's love and grace to this week? Good afternoon, King's Kids. My name is Professor I.R. Weiss, and today I'm going to show you something amazing. My assistant Hans and I just love doing experiments. I was looking at the story we have been learning about today, where Captain Naaman had leprosy, and he was told to wash in the Jordan River. That got me thinking about an experiment with glitter and water. Hans, are you ready to do another experiment? Very good. Let's get on with it. Once again, we'll be needing some equipment for this experiment. Hans, could you please bring me a glass of water? Oh, thank you, Hans. I was getting thirsty. Hans, can you bring me another glass of water for the experiment? I drank all of this one. Yes, that's right, Hans. Thank you. Could you please bring some cotton tips? Very good. Now I need some liquid soap. No, 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 Hans. Not a microscope. I need some liquid soap. That's right, Hans. And of course, I need some glitter. Very 
Very good, thank you, Hans. That glitter does look pretty, doesn't it? Anyway, let's get on with our experiment. Hans, can you please sprinkle some glitter into the glass of water? Yes, that's right, Hans. Please pick up one of the cotton tips. Yes, that's right. Now dip it into the glass of water and then pull it out again. Can you see that, King's Kids? After being in the water, the cotton tip has glitter stuck to it. Try it again with another cotton tip, please, Hans. It did the same thing. It also has glitter stuck to it. Like when Captain Naaman dipped into the water when he had leprosy. And when he came out, he still had leprosy. Try it one more time, please, Hans. Yes, the same thing happened. It is also covered in glitter. Captain Naaman was asked to dip seven times in the Jordan River. So far, we have dipped three cotton tips in the water. Hans, can you please try with three more cotton tips? Well, that makes six times. And as you can see, each of those six cotton tips came out covered in glitter. Just like Captain Naaman came out still covered with leprosy. Now here is the exciting part. Hans, can you please get the liquid soap and another cotton tip? Coat the cotton tip with liquid soap. On the seventh time, Captain Naaman dipped into the water, something different happened. Let's see what happens when we put the soap-covered cotton tip in our glass of water and glitter. Did you see that, King's Kids? The glitter seemed to be rushing away from the cotton tip. And when it came out of the water, it has come out clean just like Captain Naaman did when he came out of the Jordan River the seventh time. He came out clean too. His leprosy was gone. So why did the glitter rush away from the soap? When the soap mixes with the water, it changes the surface tension, causing the glitter to stop floating on top of the water. The water really wants to maintain its surface tension, so it pulls away from the soap towards the edges of the dish, carrying the glitter with it. Isn't that amazing? Well, thank you, Hans, for helping me with this experiment today. We will see you all next time. Today's Bible verse comes from John 1, verse 16. From his abundance, we have all received one gracious blessing after another. Broken body and make it new. You need 
Kids, my name is Ruth. In our story today, Captain Naaman experienced the grace and healing of God who loves everyone. God's grace is a gift given to all of us, but we have to accept it. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a Naaman in a box to remind you that you need to accept the gift of grace God offers. The things you'll need are a glue stick, an empty matchbox, some decorating paper, two strips of long paper, a pencil or a pen, and something to decorate it with. First, you need to wrap your matchbox. Now I'm going to put a bow on the top. Now I'm going to set this to the side. Glue the long strips of paper together. One horizontal, one vertical. Now fold them to make a zigzag. Make sure you keep it neat. Glue the last one in place to hold it. I'm going to draw a smiley face on top. Now I need to glue him into the box. Carefully close the box and offer it to someone. When they open it, Naaman should spring out with joy. 
Then you can tell them all about the story of the gift of grace. Have fun making your own name in a box. Bye. Hey, good day there, King's kids. My name's Shane, and welcome along to another Discovery Bible. Now, who have we got online today? Um, oh, I can see Ella. Good day, Ella. Hi, Shane. And um, oh, it's just. Just Ella and, and, and myself. Where's Andy? Oh, sorry, Shane. I forgot to tell you. Today I was at school and Andy told me that he wouldn't be able to join on his Zoom. Oh, that's no good. Well, when you see him tomorrow, I might see him too. We'll just have to say, come on, you better, you better come online. You, you've been missing a couple of times now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now, the text for today comes from John 1.16. We better pray before we start. Okay, let's pray, Ella. Dear God, please guide us. Thank you. Well, Ella, I'm going to read from uh, my grandma's Bible first, and then when I'm finished, you can read from yours, okay? Okay. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. Mm. My turn. My version says, We have all received one blessing after another. God's grace is not limited. Mm. Hey Ella, what does grace mean? Well, I've got a friend called Grace and there's even Granny Grace and there's also the type of grace that I have before I have dinner. Ah, yeah, yeah there, there is those graces. But I think this text is talking about a different sort of grace. I think it's talking about the one that Jesus gives us when we do something wrong and we ask for forgiveness. So God forgives us even when we don't deserve it. So that's what grace is. Yeah, and um, in this text, I think it's saying that it's abundant. What does abundant mean? I think it means, wait, let me just have a look at my verse. Oh, it means unlimited. That's what it means. Oh, unlimited. Does that mean that it never runs out? Yep, that's what it means, Shane. So it goes on and on and on forever. Oh, yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> well, this is a cool text. Grace is abundant <laughs> and goes on forever. Oh, that's really cool. Hey, hey, can you read your text again, Ella? Okay, sure, Shane. My text says, we have all received one blessing after another. God's grace is not limited. Thanks, Ella. Um, can you pray before we go? Sure. Dear Jesus, please bless all the King's kids. Thank you that we had a fun Bible discovery. Please help us to learn more about you. Amen. Amen. Well, it's time to go now, King's kids. We'll see you later. See you, Ella. Bye, Shane. Bye, Andy, if you're watching this. <laughs> you are very precious, you are greatly loved, don't forget how valuable you are, you're created for a purpose, designed and made with love. God loves every single person, everyone. There isn't one he doesn't care for, isn't one he doesn't love. There isn't one he didn't send his son to save. And his heart is longing, we accept his love today. God loves every single person, everyone. You are very precious, you are greatly loved Don't forget how valuable you are You're created for a purpose, designed and made with love God loves every single person, everyone There isn't one he doesn't care for, isn't one he doesn't love there isn't one he didn't send his son to save And his heart is longing, we accept his love today 
God loves every single person, everyone. There isn't one He doesn't care for, isn't one He doesn't love. There isn't one He didn't send His Son to save. And His heart is longing, we accept His love today. God loves every single person, everyone. God loves every single person, everyone. God loves every single person, loves everyone. Uh, there isn't one person that he doesn't care for. Uh, there isn't one person uh, that he doesn't love. Uh, he cared for Captain Naaman and he cares for you too, King's Kids. God's love and grace is for everyone. And that is just the best news ever. Uh, anyway, King's Kids, uh, it's time to go now. I will look forward to catching up with all of you again next time. So take care, stay safe, and God bless. I'm a king's kid, yes I'm a king's kid.